Okay, so uh, once again, you're welcome. We are going to look at our um, the last part of module one. Okay, so we basically have. Uh, let me project. Let me project um, what we are going to study today. Uh, these are the last things that we are going to do. These ones highlighted in yellow. We want to look at page layout. We want to see um, printing workbooks. How do we go about printing workbooks and the documents we have in our Excel? And then, of course, uh, saving and sharing workbooks. This saving and sharing workbook, there isn't really much. Most of the things that are here are not really the things that we uh, we get involved in. So we may not just spend so much time there. Okay, so. Let me uh, upload a workbook that we'll be using for today's um, activity. And that is, um, um, we have um, this, this is the workbook that we are going to be using. Well, let me find out. Somebody's calling me. Let me know if this person is supposed to join the Excel. Okay, okay, now I'll get I'll get across to that person later on. This. Okay, so this is the workbook that we will be using to do some work. Now let me zoom out. We have a up to column H. Okay, by the way, I created this because I wanted to put something here. So in a workplace, what and what do we have? Job rating, um, designation. Okay, so uh, let me see if we can put designation here. Okay. Um, okay, so we have a... STO, here we have a STA, we have TO, we have PO. Okay, so we just jostle this. Let me just jostle this. Okay. Now we have this workbook. If you look at the down part of my screen here, you will see three different a kind of icon. Here we have a normal view. By default, when you open Excel, this is what shows. Then we have the page layout, and then we have the page break preview. Now, it's important that uh, we know when to switch to each of these uh, formats. Like I say, by default, when you open your Excel, most likely it will be on this normal view. So if I want to enter data here, I've entered this data. If I want to print, uh, you know, because Excel is designed to hold electronic data, but most times you may have need to print the entire document, the entire uh, spreadsheet, the entire workbook or a selected portion of your data. So it becomes important to know how to arrange your sheet in a way that it will print what you want. Like I said yesterday, when I first started using Excel years back, I found, very, I found it very difficult and almost frustrating. I wasted a lot of papers. I will want to print something eventually I will print a part. What I want will not come out. If I manage to put all of them together, they will be very, very tiny. 
So I, 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 I don't know if any one of us had ever experienced that, but it's something that we really need to uh, master so that when we want to paint, we won't waste papers. Even at workplace, I've seen a lot of people when they send, and then they don't know how to control what to print, and you see a whole lot of pages printed, and eventually they may not need any of those things. So what we are going to be doing now is going to help us to save costs, okay? So this is the normal view, which everybody is very familiar, and this, Well, uh, I am not pausing, um, Justofi. I am not pausing. I'm continuing. I guess it might be your network. So, if we look at the entire work uh, sheet, this uh, spreadsheet, and I have labeled this one "Insert Delete." It has how many now? Seven hundred and forty-two. Okay. Now, if I want to print this. The normal thing that we will do is to control P, and then it shows us the preview. So the first thing I noticed here is that my orientation, my page orientation is portrait. Now, when you can switch between portrait and landscape, depending on what you want to do. If you have a data and you want to print it such that you have a, a you want it to contain more number of columns. Remember, the columns are the vertical ones. You want to you want to have as many columns as possible. You switch. I'm going to escape here so that I'll go back to this point. I can come to the page layout here, and then I open my orientation. You can see it is portrait. Now, if I look at my print preview, Control P. I will see that here, the last column here is benefit. Let me escape. This is where it's going to stop. But I want all this to be contained in one page, at least up to this designation. I want it to get to that point. So what I need to do first, let me try another orientation, landscape. So now that I have landscape, let me see Control P, it has extended to tax rate. I'm a bit happier. Then look under here, I have page one of 72. Let's see what is this page two. Page two is this, page three is this, page four is this. The reason why we are seeing Okay, there, there was something I did I shouldn't have done. I need to take us through. Okay, so let me just, um, let me see if this has it. There's something I did, I don't I didn't want to, okay, so let's work with this data, with this sheet. So I'm gonna hide this one so that we can now work on this, okay? So this is what I have and, uh, Remember, I said we want to. Now, if I control P now, it's taking me to years. The last column here is years. Meanwhile, this is the years here, but we want it to get up to up to the new compensation. We want it to get to up to new compensation, or at least let it go beyond this. Again, control P, let me see where it's taking me to. Control P is what? It takes me to years. So this is F, where it's going to take me to. Now looking at this, I have so much, color, uh, so much records up to 742. So it would be wise for me to choose a landscape orientation. Now I have set this to landscape which means it's going to contain more columns. Now, let me go to control P. It has gone to compensation. We have added two more columns. From years, we have benefits and then we have compensation. But I'm not satisfied with that. I close, I come back to my page layout. 
let me open this page setup. What happens if I choose a different paper size? I love A4. In most of my documents, I like A4. And then let me go to a margin. Is there anything I can do to the margin? The margin is set at 0.75. So let me reduce this to 0.25. Let me reduce right to 0.25 also. I don't have any problem with the bottom. Let me OK it. Then let me go back to my print preview. Yes, we now have this new compensation. So you see that by looking at my page layout before printing, I have done some settings. Now I'm going to escape here. There are other ways you can come here as a shortcut. Remember to look at my print preview. I am using Control P, which takes me here. I can also use Control F2 as in function two, and it brings me to the page preview. Now we're exiting there. Now I want us to look at this point here, this page layout. I'm going to click that. Now this is going to come in this format. This is 190. My zoom level is 190. So let me reduce it. Let's work with 100. Now this is 100. The origin, that's the way it should appear. You will see that this layout, this is exactly how it's going to appear on your paper when you print it. What we did at the backstage there, at the print preview, we can also do it here. I'll just show you one way that we can do our adjustment, but we can also do it from this point, this page uh, layout. Now, what we need to do is, once we have clicked there, there are a lot of things we can do here. One of such things is, if you see here, I have several, if you look down here, it's page one of 25. So let me go down and see, these are the pages. So there are several things we need to do. This page has these headers. I usually would love to have all the headers in each page. Somebody sent a text. Okay, you don't worry, uh, at page setup, we, this is what we are still doing. We are still at page setup. So when I want to print a, a document that has several pages, I would want to, I want to ensure that this header, this header here, that they appear on each, on each page. Otherwise, when you push this page out, by the time you are printing this one, you won't really know what these columns, the headers for each of these columns. So you see this is page, this is page two, this is page three. So this page, this page is inserted, okay? So what we need to do is, we are going to do a lot of operations here. I am going to click here because I'm in this page. I am in this page view, uh, I mean, uh, this um, page layout view. Here, I can choose to say I want, um, that is my, just a minute. I'm expected to see. Okay. Now, in this view, there are several things that we are going to do. For instance, here, this is file. You see, this is a, it's a, um, um, it's a program for Excel. You don't need to bother yourself with the program or how to write the program. 
they have already been written and they have just been represented by these icons here. I have these three columns or three different fields that I can use to customize my page, my page uh, look. How do I want my page to look? Now I can decide to say, I want the page number to be here. I simply come here and click page. When I click elsewhere, the page shows. Now this same thing has duplicated. If I go to this way, I see this page here, not page two. I go down here, I see, okay, this is still the down part. Then you see here page three, this is the third page. I go down for all the pages, they have been labeled like that. Now I can click here also and decide that here, I want uh, the current date. You see the icon here again, current date. I click it. This is the program, which I said, we don't need to know how to program it. It has been programmed and represented by icon. So now that I've chosen date here, I'm going to click outside and it's going to bring that date here. So today is 3rd of May, 2020. If I scroll down to the next page, I will have it here. If I scroll up to how many pages here, I'll still see the dates here. This is page 21, okay? And the date is here. That's the second thing we can do. I may decide to put here now and say, uh, I want it to be a have run Excel tutorials. And I click outside, it becomes it. If I scroll down to any page, it's appearing on the same side for all the pages. Now, the next thing I want us to do is, I want if I come here, every page, let it bear the same header. This same header so that I can guide you. When you print, or you go to page 48, each column will have a header. How do we do that? We are still going under our page layout. We go to print titles, print titles. So I'm going to click this and this dialog box is going to come up. This is the row that I want to repeat at the top. You can also customize that you want to, you want a particular column to appear at the left hand side of every page. For us now, we are only interested in this header, employee, building, department, and so to appear in all our pages. So this is here. If I have the correct referencing, the cell referencing, by the way, once I'm done this, I'm going to just pick one or two things on cell references. So, but I don't have that. I just want to pick. So I'm going to collapse this by clicking this upward arrow. I click this and then the arrow changes when I come here, it's pointing towards the left. So I'm going to say, this is what I need. It has highlighted this. You can see the dash box round about it. And I'm going to click this again. I'm going to click this to open it back. Then I am going to okay it. That is done. So if I print, if I open, I scroll down to any other page, Let's go to page two. I have my headers here. Let's go to page three. I have my header here. Let's go to page what now? This page 19. Page 19 has my header. And each of them has all these things that I have put here. This is a very simple way of working on your page layout so that you can customize it to fit what you want. Now I'm going to go back uh, to the first, uh, this normal, and then let me zoom out. This is it. And please note that even though I have done that, by the time you come to your normal view, you will see those things on each of the page. By the way, this is not even broken down into pages, okay? But by the time you come like this, you come to your page layout, you will now know how many pages? There are 50 pages, as we can see. Right, so now let's go briefly back here. Somebody sent in a chat, let me see.
Okay, the headers. Okay, so let me go back to the headers. I say, um, okay, let me let me undo a lot of things. Let me undo. Um, let me undo up to this point. Okay, so we are looking. Let me just briefly look at uh, take the page layout from the beginning again. The page setup. I am going. I want to print this. By the way, let me reduce. Let me reduce my zoom, my magnification. Okay, so we have this. This is how our page, our document looks like. Control P takes me to this. Okay, we had already done a lot of things here. Before now, it wasn't like this. So we had to do some adjustment. Okay, so let me see if I can use any of this. Uh, okay, so let me see this one. Control P. Good. So let me explain those two, the, the things we have explained so far. Let me use this to explain it again. This is the document that we have. By default, your, your Excel is in a portrait and it's also in normal view. So after you have entered your data, you want to print. So we say it's advisable to look review how it's going to appear on your paper. And we can do that by looking at the print preview. Control P. It brings you to the print dialog where it previews the page. Now here, under here, you will see it is one of 34 pages. Over here, you see that if I print it the way it is, I'm going to have one page breaking at benefits but that's not what i want i want let me escape here i want to print up to compensation so if i if i want to print up to comp, uh, compensation that means i have to adjust my page layout so that it will fit into what i want so if i go here it's in the portrait orientation one of the things that i can do is to change the orientation. You can do that here. You can do a lot of things here, but I am beginning from coming to my page layout here. This is my page setup. I click it, the dialogs open, the dialog opens. This is the portrait. So, but I want to now use the landscape. I okay it. Let me see the preview. What's my print preview? Good, the landscape has taken a lot of uh, things in. But now you see also there, at this point, this department, there are some that will be printed and they will not be clear. So that means I have to adjust it. So I escape and look at my department here. By the way, I can automatically do double click so that it opens. Remember we, we talked about this yesterday. I didn't need to drag and see how it's going to fit. So. I can further highlight all of them here and then double click so that all of them will adjust automatically to fit in the content. That is done. Now, let me go back to my print preview. Okay, this is exactly what I want. Let me escape. Assuming um, we have another column here. Oh, uh, let me see if there's something else I need to put here. Okay, let me, let's just continue. Let's go to my print preview. Now, there are different options that you can use. Like this one, we didn't have problem that will warrant us to change the paper. Paper size, we say we can do this thing here. We can choose A4. Like I like, I, I said earlier, I like using A4. So I can choose A4 here and it adjusts, okay? I can also do a lot of things here, depending on what my preference is. Now, if we were something, let me escape here. Let me add, what can I move and copy from here? Let me see if, I, if there's anything I can move here. Um, okay, let me just... Uh, 
find and replace. Let me keep it here. So this is higher. Maybe let me say fire. Fire date. Okay. Let me see the print preview again. Fire date is there. Okay. Let me escape. I want something that will. Let's open here. Acceptance date. Acceptance date. Okay. So uh, let me just uh, randomly select dates here. Equals to. Forget about this. What I want to do now. Okay, so let me look at that good. Right now, there is a column here which I want to include. I think that is the acceptance date. So what I need to do is, this is a, a landscape orientation and this is my A4. Now I can come to this point just below the screen, the right hand side below the screen i click this and it opens so i can from here do some adjustment manually on the left and the right side okay it's still there i'm opening this okay this is the end that it can come so it, does, it still does not follow, it does not um, pick all what I want. Now, let me come to this place. There are different, different customized uh, options here. I can also come to scaling here. There is no scaling here. Fit sheet on one page. Let's see this. It has brought everything in one page. We only have uh, three of these. So everything is put here. This is not what we want. Let's look at another one. Scaling. Fit all columns on one page. You see, it has brought all my acceptance. It, what I was looking for also, it has brought it here. And there are 24. So I scroll. This is this. Acceptance dates is still showing at that thing, but we don't have that as our header. So it's going to be a bit confusing. But at least we have achieved one thing, one of the things we want. 
by just adjusting. So ev everything now is in this page. So this is one way that we can do. You just have to do, there are different options that you can play around until you get that which you want. Let me escape here. Then let me go to this page layout. Let me zoom out. Let me make it 100. Good. So this is exactly how it's going to be. And uh, on, in this format, this is the page layout. We have options to make adjustments or customize this header. And at the same time also, we can adjust our footer. So let's adjust our header. Here, I say, I might decide to put the center will be what this page, what this document is all about. Let's say I am going to put Avron Excel tutorials. I've done, I am done. I just simply click elsewhere and it appears. This has also appeared on all the pages. That's one operation. I might decide to say, okay, here, let's put date. So I click my design, page number no, uh, what did we want to put here? We want to put current date. So I put the current date here. I click outside, the date appears. This date appears in all the documents, all the pages rather. Then here, what should we put? Let's put our page here. So I still come here and click my page number. I click outside, it numbers it. Now this, if I go to the next one is page two, I go is page three. Now for my, um, for my footer here, I just want to customize something. Let me say, I want to put confidential documents. I click outside, it shows for confidential document. Now this also appears in all the pages, downward, and what we have done upward at the head. But one more thing we need to do when we're printing, it is not necessary, I mean, it is not compulsory, depending on what you want to do. For me, if I have this doc kind of document, I want each page to bear the header. So what I need to do is this header here, I want it to appear in all the pages. So still in this view, I'm going to click my page layout. And then this is my print tit uh, uh, titles. I click it. This dialog box will open. Now we have this rows to repeat at the top. This is what I want. If you have good grasp of the Excel referencing, you can simply put the reference here, just type it straight. But if you don't have, you can go and pick it. So I want to pick it. I need to collapse this so that I can go and pick it. When you collapse it, it comes in this format. And now my cursor changes. So I'm going to click here. I click here. So it has told, it has selected, I have selected what I want. Let me open it again. And then I'm going to OK it. Now this is done. If I go to the next page, which is page two, I have my header here appearing in all the documents. It's appearing in all the documents as we can see. Okay, we can see this. So these are the operations you can do. Now, let me uh, take us to the third uh, view option. Now, this one, it brings us to this point. Most times we have seen this. Now, if you want to print, if you want to print each document, maybe you want it to have like a, um, how do I put this now? I want 10, 10 persons to appear on each page. All I need to do is, let me zoom this more. 
this is uh, let's say from here to this point this is maybe i wanted to come here i would have i would have used a rating i would have used a rating okay let me see what i can use here do i have any rating here do i have any rating here okay um we haven't started dealing with data but i'm going to do some sorting here so that i can arrange everybody in this uh, table to appear in uh, this descending order the highest will come on top okay so i'm um, coming here don't ask me a question about this sorting when we get to sorting we'll do that i want it to largest to the money zone okay so i have done this now this is 10 okay so i want to print i want i want to have this here i want my page breaker to stop here all i need to do is i come here go to my page layout i'm going to print i'm going to print uh, print uh, area i open it i'm going to set no uh, sorry i'm actually supposed to put a um, a page breaker there insert a page break so it's done this is page one you have customized it so let me view this this is my page one let me get out of this uh, this is my page one that is the way i want it i just want these 10 persons to appear on one page let me escape when I come here again, this is page two. Page two is too long. I just want it somewhere here. Let me go to my page breaker. Let me start here. It is here. Let me view the two pages. This is page one. This is page two. Then the other ones will still appear as normal. So if you have your group of uh, clients, hospitals, um patients employees and you have arranged them and you want each page to contain just a group of uh, uh persons with the same identity say they are receiving the same pay or they are in the same uh, department they are in the same date or they are all full time you can do this so this is what you want and you program excel to print what you want okay so um at this point i want to stop and then uh, entertain some questions so i would like to uh, entertain some questions Send through the chat box. Okay, the freeze pane, uh, it's really not the same. 
the page um you know your when you freeze a pen you are just viewing to do your work when you print it it will not appear the way you have frozen the, the paints so now that i have put this page break if i scroll up all of them will go away there is nothing holding back any part of my uh document from moving which is what the freeze pain does if i freeze somewhere and i'm scrolling that portion that i have frozen will remain it will not move okay so okay so let me use this opportunity to do a bit of uh, the uh the freezing when i come to my view i'm going to freeze but first of all i need to determine where i want to freeze now i want to freeze this part i want my employee to be uh visible so let me print let me come here i'm going to freeze i'm keeping the top row keep the top row visible so when i click this and i begin to scroll only the top row is frozen the rest goes in and it's the same thing if i'm scrolling this way All these notifications. Uh -uh. Oh, sorry. I'm 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 not sure. I projected my. Sorry. Let me project the screen. I'm sorry about that. I'm sure you can see this now. Okay, so uh, on, that, on that view, let me unfreeze. So what we are saying is, there are different ways I can freeze my pain. And freezing helps you to keep some part of your document from moving as you scroll either left or right, upward and downward. So one of the things that I want to explain here is I can freeze this first row that is here. So when I come to freeze pane, I am keeping the upper row, the top row visible while scrolling through the rest of the worksheet. So when I click this, this header uh, remains. So when I scroll down, I am scrolling down, it's going. But that part, first part is intact, it's just frozen. I will unfreeze. Then there's another way again. Assuming what you want, you want to look at this person now. Let me just uh, color this. This is what I want. If I click here, you're going to see, if I say I want to freeze here, I will not be able to do that. You see, it's moving. It's still the same one that is moving. But for me to make this one remain, I have to scroll up, let it get to this point, then I can now freeze this top row. And so when I'm scrolling downward, that part that is just close at the top of the columns here, column headers, is the one frozen. That is one uh, option of uh, freezing. Let me undo that and show us another one. It is possible that I also have some headers here. Oh, okay, these are the persons, okay? These are the employees. So I want to be looking at their various activities here, their records, each of the, uh, of the data. So I can decide to come here and freeze this top and this column. Freezing the top, the two, examples that we explained previously is just to freeze the upper row the upper row that is close to this point here that's the one we are freezing right now we want to look at freezing a column and a row so i'm going to have clicked here this is b2 so what it means is that anything above it is going to remain fixed Anything on this left-hand side is going to remain fixed. They will not move. So I'm going to open here, 
see here now keeps rows and columns visible keeps rows and columns visible so when i click this and i scroll up that header still remains it does not go along and when i i scroll towards my right this also stops so that is one another another way you can uh, work on your view options to make it uh, convenient for you i'm going to unfreeze this now the other one is okay by the way there's another option here assuming you have so much data now let me just assuming this is a whole lot data that we want and we want to be seen here comparing it with a uh, comparing it with the individual person now the first the other um um freezing we did was here that's to freeze this column a and row one but assuming i want to be seen up to this point up to the higher and i want everything from here down uh, towards my right to be moving all i need to do is to come here and put my cursor go to my freeze lane uh, freeze pane click it and it freezes so everything from here will remain uh, static while i scroll towards this side as you can see everything is fixed so if i have to compare all these records against a particular one that is moving this happens okay so these are the different options now the other option the other final one is i only want here to remain so i come here i just say freeze this one and it moves the same thing if i unfreeze this but i want this compensation to be here maybe there are so many things you need to view and you need space so you want all these ones to go behind here so that only this compensation will remain here all i need to do is I will scroll and push that compensation to come to the point where I want. And then I come here, freeze this. And then when I start scrolling, that compensation and every other thing before compensation are hidden. They are not really hidden. I don't want us to conf uh, confuse this with hiding columns. This is just freezing. I've just frozen it. So all I need to do to see everything is to unfreeze. And then when I scroll, I see them. Okay, so um, let me briefly talk on the last thing I wanted to speak concerning um, cell. I think there is a chat. Let me look at that chat. What of documents with longer rules? How do you fit into one page? Okay, when you have a very long a document that has several uh, that has several columns i guess i don't know if you are, if you mean columns if you say many columns that means up down what like this one we have several rows but i want to believe that you mean several columns where all of them may not fit even if you use them um, if you use all your margins and then you use the landscape if that is what you mean sometimes it's not possible well not that it's not possible you can fit it but they become very 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 tiny and difficult to read so originally or primarily let me use the word primarily excel is not for uh, print out documents it's just to hold data analyze and manage data but you can also use it to print so if you have a data that is so long, which Excel is made to do, it may not be able to print all the documents. So you may just have to look for the one that you need per time and print. And that brings me to another thing that you can also print a selection. If you don't want to print the whole thing, if you don't want to insert page, uh, page breaks, you can uh, select a page, um, you can select the portion you want to print for instance now i might want to say okay i want to print documents uh people from department i want to shield i want to shield their 
I want to see their names. So I want to look at uh, job ratings. And then I tell somebody, uh, this is what is happening. The so so and so department is doing well. I won't mention the names of the individuals who are making the departments to look well. So I can select this and I say print. It comes like this. I am going to say, uh, I'm going to, instead of printing active sheet, I'm going to print selection. When you print selection, it's going to come out. As we see now, this is what is going to come out for me to print. I have selected the, uh, department status and their hire. And I'm going to share this to my colleagues that I want to share with, I have meeting with. I say, can you see what is happening in this department, this department? But I did not print the names of the people who make this to happen. So this is another way that we can look at. Another person is saying, uh, ah, my screen is shared. What of documents with longer rules? Okay, so this is what I have just answered here. There are times you may not be able to print everything in the document. How do we print a document that has up to 2,000 or 1,000 uh, columns and so forth and so on? So you just need to decide what is important per time. Okay, that is done. And uh, let me see. Now, there's something I just remembered I should let us know. I want to write. Now, I have written my name is One the next sentence that I want to do to be a paragraph, but I want it to be in this A1. If I enter, it goes to the next one, which is two. But that's not what I want. I want it to, for instance, now I want my name is Sam Sinemilike. Okay. I reside in Abuja. Okay. I love playing with Excel. So these are the three statements or sentences that I I want to appear on this same on this same place. Sometimes we may find it difficult, but see what is going to happen. I am going to type my name is Sam Sin. MLK, full stop. If I want the next statement to come down below this with this within the same cell, I hold down my control, I mean my alt, my alt key. Hold down my Alt key and enter, and then it opens. I reside in Abuja, full stop. Hold down my Alt button, enter. I love playing with Excel. When I'm done, I enter. All this is in one cell, which is A5. I just I felt I should let us know this. And then I can also uh, go ahead and centralize this, and it becomes like this. This is another way of wrapping, customized wrapping. So if I zoom in, let me, let's see how the other one is going to look like. My, okay, I don't want to, there's other, let me use this. Okay, so this is what I have just done. My name is Samson Emelike. I reside in Abuja. I love playing with Excel. Now I can wrap this. I've wrapped it. So if I bring it close here and open here, it has done, just done the same thing here. All I need to do is to start making this. Okay, if you wrap it, it's not going to be exactly the way you want it. That's why it's customized. So you see, uh -huh. and then I come here, it almost look like this. But you see the difference now. 
this one you were using odds to enter it the way you want each when you want the next statement to come below you use it so i said i should let us know this all right so let's go back to our question and uh, answer session i'm waiting for any question from the chat box Okay, while I wait for that, there's something again. Please, how did you do that header stuff? Okay, all I did was to, let me see, do I have this in all my, no, I'm not printing selection, actives, what's uh, page two, page three, okay, all of them have that. Okay, so good enough. We didn't save a lot of things. So let me close and then undo. Let me open the Excel again. Um, what was that that we were working on? What was that layout? Okay. It's coming up. So now I can share this again. Good. So let me see my print uh, preview. Okay, this is exactly where we are. Okay. Okay, the the wrap. Okay. Okay, I'm going to after this um, header. So what I, I, I said about the header is we need to be in a, this point here, this page layout. When we come to this page layout, let me zoom in, zoom out. So this, this page layout, all the pages do not have the headers, but I want to insert the headers. So what I need to do is to come to Page layout, I click the page layout. I have these print titles. Print titles, I click this, this pops up. This is what I want to repeat in my header at the top. So I click, but I don't know the reference. I am new to Excel, so I don't know how to type in the reference of what I want. I would rather love to pick. So I'm going to pick. So I collapse this by this uh, upward arrow. And then my cursor now changes to this uh, image. I come here and click. I say, this is what I want to appear on the other headers. So I'm done with my selection. I open this so that I can OK it. And it's done. So if I check uh, the next page, I see this on the next page. When I scroll down to a very, maybe about page 14, 15, they are all there. So this is how we do the header stuff, okay? So my other friend said the wrap text. So I said, I want to say, I want to, I want to write some statements. Hello, my friends. How are you today? Now, these are the three statements that I have uh, written. But I want all of them to appear in the same cell. So it becomes difficult for me. So, but what I say that we can do it, make it happen by hello, my friends, full stop. Since I want this to come under it, since I want this to come under it, I can hold down my alt 
alt button on your keyboard and then holding it down i press enter and then i keep typing how how are you today i need to type the next one i still hold down my alt and enter the sun is shining brightly i enter i am done so this is all of them they are just the way i want each one coming down even if i extend this thing here just at the point i want the new statement to start beneath it happened so we seem to have uh, some charts okay so i uh, uh, when we get to the next module is it the next module when we start talking about reference relative and uh, absolute referencing in excel you'll be able to understand but there is something i will just need to tell us here in, uh, with respect to reference uh, cell references okay uh, the other person says uh, okay i have about three messages here okay so uh Olushe, i have just repeated the wrap text the other one says, can you go over how to move what you have on Rosas? One. And says A1, A2, A3 to sell R1, R2, R3. Especially if you have done some adjustment like highlight. Okay, I think there are two things there. Is the format paint and then the moving as in copying or uh, cutting and pasting okay i'll look at that you wanted to tell us something about cell reference okay how you done okay no 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 no. cell reference i'll just briefly mention that now please i start picking the rule can okay so um i have two things pending now now yesterday when we were discussing cell basics we say that uh, each cell has a number and you use that uh, sorry it has address and you use that address to identify it for instance this is f2 okay now let me let me just look for a sheet that has data so i can do the other things that were asked okay so i have this this is a2 this is b2 now this is a cell range this is a cell range i have selected a2 up to c2 so if if we are looking at range now this is the range a2 so let me just um, highlight this one so this cell range is a two to c two this is the range so if someone tells you select a two c two this is it now if i select like this i'm selecting more than one role more than one column and this that the cell range is defined by the first one which is a3 here let me paint let me add another let me color this fill this so this cell range that i have selected now is defined by this one a3 up to this last one here is c9 so I have C9. Okay, so if assuming I wanted to just type, assuming I want a header to appear and the Excel is requesting for the cell range and I have this knowledge, I can simply say type this, I can type this. But then I have to lock, I have to lock it. Locking means putting a sign, a dollar sign. 
And when there is a dollar sign in a cell range, that cell range is absolute. We'll talk about that later. Okay, so I just wanted to mention that a range is defined, when you see these columns, is defined by this. This is the beginning of the cell selection. And the last one is the end. You, see, you know that there's no way you can come and select uh, there's no way you can come and select A3 and then just go straight to select this without highlighting all of them. So if I just come straight here, I want to come and collect this one, you see that the entire range is selected. Okay, so these are the two things that I wanted to share with us. And uh, let me, is there another question that I needed to... Okay, so I've mentioned this. Emmanuel, aside picking the role, yes, when you understand how cell range uh, work and then relating it with cell referencing, yes, you'll be able to do that. When you know the location of the header, you just pick it up and then uh, insert. Yeah, uh, Fumi said you wanted to tell us something about cell referencing. No, I think it was a mistake I made. I wanted to mention cell range, the cell range. That's what I have just mentioned now. Okay, so you didn't really miss anything. I've just explained that. Then, uh, and I said, can you go over how to move? Okay, so I want to do that move movement now. That's with respect to cell formatting. Okay, let me let me undo the field that I've done here. So what I tried to explain yesterday is. These are, these people, they have the same thing. They are for, they are full time. They are full time, so they belong to the same category of uh, staff. So for everyone who is a full staff, let's fill their cells with yellow. That's one operation. Let's make the font red. That's two. Let's centralize their content. That's three. Let's make it bold. That's four. Let's italize it. That's five. And then let's see if we can put a strike through. Let's put a strike through all of them. All of them are like this. So this usually happens when there are people you want to remove from a data you say, please don't consider anyone that maybe you have edited and you say, take away this person, take away this person. You have just canceled them, something like this. Good. So if I want to move these people to a different place, I want to copy it and then paste somewhere here. I've selected, I can do control C, which you all know, escape, or I come here and do control C. I mean, uh, this uh, icon. I can also undo that. But there's another portion that I want to drop. I'm picking it and I'm dropping it. Now, I am not holding anything on my keyboard. Rather, I'm going to pick with my mouse. When I pick and drop here, see what's going to happen. I have moved everything. Okay? I have moved everything. But that is not what I wanted to do. I wanted to still leave a copy here. Let me undo a lot of things that I've done. Let me undo the move. So what I want is to just pick a, a copy of this. So what I can do is still place my this thing here and the changes, the cursor changes. I'm going to hold down my control as I pick and drop it. So I'm holding my control. See what's going to happen to the cursor. It has changed. There is a plus sign there. So I'm dragging it away. And I'm going to release my mouse before releasing the control. So I release it, I've made a copy and I've removed my hand from the control. And using our this thing to, to auto fit, I've applied auto fit to this and I have this. I've moved and I've dropped here. So I guess that answered um, what uh, I think that was Eno asked. The other thing that I may just briefly mention is uh, Format painter. So we say that these people 
who are full time. Remember, these people are full time. Let's look wherever we see full time. Let's apply this. So this is uh, one. Uh -huh. This person, for me to uh, make it look like this, I have to undergo several um, operations. I have to fill with yellow. I have to change the color of the of the font to red. I have to bold it. I have to italize it. I have to centralize it, and I have to strike through. These are about six operations or thereabout. But with two operations, I can do that. What do I need to do? Select these ones. That's one operation. I have clicked. I've come to click my format painter. And then where is my full time? This is my full time. Just drop it. And everything that is here applies to here. So if I have a lot of full time employee that I want to apply this, rather than clicking once, this is just once. I want to click twice so that it becomes multiple. So that if I finish doing this one, I don't need to go there and pick again. I'll simply go with it. Just be checking through my, my document to see who, where you wanted to tell us something. Okay, that's, I think there's a new message. There's a new message, sorry, let me see. What's the essence of having the cell range and locking it? Okay, when we get to, Edward, when we get to cell referencing, we understand why it's very, very important. Uh, you see sometimes a cell will, will make a reference and you lock it. Uh, okay, 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 okay. I think there are 13 new messages, wow. Is it only a dollar sign that is used? Yes, in Excel. The one I know of is a dollar. Uh, when we use a pound, I think there is another program that uses that. I can't remember. So for dollar, a dollar is used to, to lock a cell. Lock it not like it's not editable, but it is uh, making it absolute. When we get to cell referencing, we understand what absolute referencing means and relative referencing. What did you press to cancel? So cancel what, please? Olusha, okay, the uh, auto fit. No, there is no auto fit icon. You just need to apply it, okay? I also didn't get how you stroke it. Okay, I'm going to do that to strike. If you, okay, somebody has answered. You, you do your selection, then you click Control Shift plus F. It brings out that uh, font dialog where you can now choose what you want to do. Thank you, Anete. I think this was a bit fast. Kindly take this again. What should I take again? Uh, is it Control Shift uh, plus F? Okay. It opens it down. Okay, okay. I think you are trying to. Good, 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 good. Okay. Uh, Anete has tried to explain some things there, but uh, let me just take it once again. Um, so. If we are done with this, wherever you see full time, just drop this and apply it. Just drop this and apply it. And you can, like this one that are together, I can select more than one rule. Okay. So this is how this is done. When I'm done, I press my escape to remove this, whatever that this is doing. Okay. So um, they want me to go through the strike again. So I need to select, I need to select what I want. Uh, this is what I want, for instance, Control Shift F, it brings it here. So I have strike through here. This is where I did my strike through and I applied it. You can see the preview here, how it's going to look like. So when I okay this, it's already striking through these ones. Okay, so that's how to strike through. Then uh, the other question mentioned that, uh, what was that again you say I should do, please? Um, somebody, okay, Amir was the one that's, okay, Amir, I hope um, uh, you will now uh, have a better understanding. Anita just described that, and I also try to do same. 
what did you press to show the okay i said the auto fit is not something if there's no icon to that all you need to do is assuming these are my these are my document i mean the data how it looks like and i want to do apply auto fit because what i want to fit into is in columns so all i need to do is to come here and select where i want to start you see i didn't start from here rather i came at the top here where my arrow is pointing downwards so i click and hold and select all that i want once i have done that i will now in between any of these columns where the my uh, cursor is now showing two way arrows left and right i will double click and then auto fit is applied so everything now is fitted into its cell depending on how long the content of the cell is it adjusts the column and is see the, see the same thing when you have big big rows like this small small rows like this okay just like this and uh, i can come here and select you see now because i want to apply auto fit my arrow my cursor is on the roads and it's pointing towards the right so that i can select all of them when i've done the selection in between any two roads where the arrows is pointing up and down i double click and it auto fills so that's how to apply auto fit all right so um i hope uh, we've done justice yeah 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 sure we will uh, bring this uh, we will share it we will definitely share this um i got great we will share it through our telegram I hope everybody is on Telegram and I hope everybody looks at that because we upload some short, short videos that will enhance learning. You can also download those ones into your system, into your phones, so that you can view offline. And we have tried to um, set our Telegram so that even new person, new, new members can still access old chats. Okay, so I think we are done. What we need to do is, um, if there are things that we need to look at again, so if there are questions, we are here to answer them. I love what is happening. You know, one thing that I discovered long ago is the more you want to explain things the better understanding you gain so if you understand that there's a question you can respond it helps to also uh, foster your knowledge that you have acquired makes a lasting uh, impression okay If we have any question, we are waiting for the question, please. Please, I would, I would like to kindly um, I would like to kindly um, request that we do not share this invite to others who do not, who have not registered for this course. I did not make a decision very, very strict. 
because I wanted people to have easy access to it, those who have paid to have easy access to it. Otherwise, we would have a program so that it's only with your email that you can be admitted. We didn't want to do that. Because there are some people that I, I there are some names I am seeing that I can't remember seeing them on our list of uh, registered participants, except if it's a different name they are using here. I am not saying that has happened, but it's a possibility. And I want to advise us against that. Okay. So I'm waiting for questions, please. Can you please show how you did the arrangement, arranging from lowest to highest? Okay, don't worry, when we begin to work with data, it's also a part of what we'll be doing, managing data. That's, in fact, that uh, managing data, it's something that um, we are just building up to that. I think that's the next, uh, let me see if that is the next. Yes, the next one is a uh, no, is advanced formula. Okay, I think that would be our module three. Yes, database tutorial, managing data is our module three. So the next module we have now is um, advanced formulas and functions. Of course, before we get to the advanced formulas, we are going to look at the simple formulas, how to write formulas, the operation, the order of operations, so that we understand as we go. So my dear, uh, the arrangement, that is sorting, custom sorting and there yeah, and so forth. We are going to do a whole lot of that when we get to, um, that's management, yes. We have charts, filtering data, okay. We have even done a part of what we are supposed to do in database, freezing panes and V options, okay? So we have shortened our work in database. So we are going to be doing groups and subtotals, sorting data, spark lines. Uh, a lot of people do not, I have not seen a lot of people using spark lines. Okay, so we are going to do a lot of that. Conditional formatting, pivot table what if analysis and then data validation. So we're doing that in our third week, third module. Yes, third week. So for next week, we'll be looking at advanced formula and functions. So that's that. If there are no more questions, I think um, we are done. So I'm going to unmute everyone now so that um, we can speak. Hey, thank you very much. Hey, Capito, that was a nice one. Thank you very much. Okay, yeah, Capito, thanks, thanks. Yeah, Capito, thanks very much. Eh? Ah, Utulu V. Utulu, you came in late yeah. because I looked for you. I didn't see you. You are not seeing you very well now, I was there. <laughs> okay, okay. Eh? Thank you very much. All right, thank you. Hello, thank you very much. All right. Um, please, my, my Excel is the one I have on my system presently. It's 2007. Okay. I is that fit? Me, but I'm planning to... Uh, you wanted to say something. I say, is that fit? No, no, no. This is Olusha. Okay, Olusha. Okay, 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 okay. Yes, yes. But I'm planning to maybe install 2013 or something on my system. But there was a time I tried doing it on my system. It was slowing down the system. Okay. Um. The the thing you need to do is um. Uh, 
it depends on your system configuration what is the ram the speed the processor this uh, the speed of the processor the RAM, the ability to hold several. No, I've been uh, told. I've been. I've been told by my engineer that I can even. I can even install twenty sixteen. Because when he checked it, he said I can install twenty sixteen. They have done now. Okay, so what you need to let him try on installing two thousand and seven, and then installing that one. Never do this side. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So, um, sorry. If at all I'm not able to do that yet, but I've done it. I've done that it means I can't use it for now. Oh. Um, office. a lot of the functions that we are dealing with that, uh, now may are, not be uh, obtainable. Yeah, I've even noticed that already. Yes. Yes. I'm looking at that. May not be obtainable <laughs> there. That's the only thing. <laughs> okay. But from 2013 to 2016, they have uniform things. Thank you so much. Something. You're welcome. Hello. Mm. Hello, yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah, okay. Something. This last video you uploaded on um, Telegram, is it the same as the one you posted yesterday? You know, the, uh, yes, it's the same because somebody say he did not get it because he joined later. I don't know what happened. Are you getting there? Okay. So I had to post that. So uh, 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 it's just for those who uh, who are coming on fresh, so that they will get it. Because I forgot to set the Telegram so that new members will access old ones, old chat. But now that I've set it, anything that we post there, we won't post it again. Okay. Sorry about that. Okay, so guys, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, we'll have our last uh, session for this module is later this evening. And for that, it's going to be by 630. We're going to send out the notification right away. Oh, I'm uh, oh, sorry, but that's yes. 630 to 7. Do you know that 7 is when we'll be breaking? Those are fasting. Okay. Okay, yeah, yeah. What will you do but about basically, that? Basically, it's not, uh, we, are, we have covered what we need to cover. You know, we gave okay. this time yeah, for, uh, it's just a review. But that, if, okay. if you, ha uh, I didn't know, I didn't notice that, I didn't remember. You break by seven, okay. right? Yes. Okay, so what do, you, what, what do you suggest? Ah. Uh, I think, can we start like 7.30 or something? I don't know if it will be convenient for somebody. Or we do it, early. no, we can't do it earlier because you know, we'll be preparing for um, things like that. Okay, but so what- Can I'm, we start? No, no, I'm going, to, I'm going to draw a poll. Let me know how many of us are engaged in this fasting. Okay. Uh, so okay. I'll do that. I'll just do that in our if, Telegram. If that will not work, we can do it the normal time. Just do it that normal time. At least the recording will be available, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah, okay. Uh, no problem. We can always get it um download. All right. So that will yeah. not inconvenient to other people. All right. Thank you for that consideration. Welcome. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. So, guys, thank you so much for being part of this uh, edition. We hope to do come again later this evening. Thank you and have a lovely rest. Thank you, Bye bye. Bye bye. Yeah. yeah.